As the sun is about to set here at the Iredell County Fairgrounds, we check out some beautiful footage from the thrilling rides to the mouth-watering treats, even some of the mysterious guests that show up here at the Iredell County Fair who expect no mercy. For over 80 years, the Iredell County Fair has been a cherished tradition, and for the eighth consecutive year, the DQ Karting Series is proud to be a part of this incredible event. Eight points is the margin heading into the Iredell County Fairgrounds race here tonight at the fair racetrack. Now, Mark, you, you've had some really good finishes here in the past, finished second there last race, and uh, I believe it was 10th the race before that, but learning the first year racing here. What is it like to run this fair here tonight and knowing that Robert Showalter's not very good here? Adam Welsh is decent, but he's, he's pretty far away. Well, first things first, the fair isn't always fair, right? Uh, tenth place finish and then a second place finish shows that it takes a little bit to get used to. Obviously, it's a different shape, uh, a little longer straightaway, a little flatter. Um, you just need to come figure it out, you know, make some laps. The more seat time you get, the better it is. Uh, the test definitely helps, so we appreciate that. Um, all you got to do is just put laps together, you know, make sure nothing falls off and try and stay out front if you get a chance. But it's it's a roller coaster. You're going to hang on for sure. Seat time is one of the most important things that you can get here in D&Q or in racing in general. We see guys run the um, Xfinity races now. They don't even need to pick up anything from that. It's just seat time. Is that what you've been getting with the micro and running this too? It seems like it's really picked up your craft. Yeah, so thanks to Hunt Brothers for, uh, Pizza for coming on board and helping me out this year, you know, making the dream come true. It definitely helps. Uh, everything's a lot quicker there. You know, coming back to here, I feel like the other guys can relate to. Things kind of slow down, and they start to make sense, and you get exposed to things that you didn't know up in the higher ranks with more power and stuff like that. So it translates back to here. Definitely helps out. I would hope that my standings this year show that. Um, but we're just looking for a good season, you know, a good way to finish out the rest of the year and hopefully bring home. Mark Ellison is Hunt Brothers Pizza Machine looking for the Cup Series Championship here with two races to go. Good to hear from Mark Ellis, but let's go down and talk to the person who is in second place in the points, Robert Showalter. Well, the test here on Saturday night was not only good for Mark Ellis, it was good for Robert Showalter, and eight points is the margin. We just talked to Ellis. He felt like he had a good test. Historically, you have not done very well here at the fair. Now, you may have run well, but not finished well. Can you turn that around tonight? Yeah, last year we were here. We were running second, I think, and the uh, rain came. And uh, I lost it. And then literally two laps later, we, we called the caution and red flag and called the race. So, um, yeah, we, we came testing and uh, felt like we were pretty good. I don't even remember seeing Ellis here. Uh, he must have came for real quick, and that was it. But, um yeah, it was a couple of clones. Um, I was quite a bit faster than them, so I feel like we're pretty good. Um, yeah, it'll be who can drive a smart race tonight, who can stay out of getting wrecked from other guys. And uh, yeah, I just got to finish in front of them. No matter if we're running for 10th, I just got to finish 9th, you know. So um, that's, that's all we're coming here to do is just in, uh, finish in front of them, finish the race, and uh, hopefully win this championship. The two of you have really hit your stride, and Adam Wells, too, had a bad race last time. But you also have those Kyle Beattie and Adam Wells right behind you, too. Very good here. We know that those guys have won a lot of races here. You're hitting your stride here. I mean, have you done something different? What What is just different now about running this Cup Series with ultra-competitive racers? Um, what's funny is, like, um, like, the chassis setup was there pretty decent, but uh, something happened during our race. Someone hit me. Something came loose. I'm not going to say what came loose, but something came loose and the cart came to life. So um, it's weird. Just uh, apparently what I had going on at that part of the, the go kart was either not letting the chassis flex or whatever it was doing. So um, now that we got that figured out, uh, the cart's really coming together really good. Um, KS mo KSR motors are strong. Um, putting new tires on them every week. So you got to, you know, have the, the grip and, uh, once again, we're just spending money to try to win this championship. <laughs> Showalter spending what it takes to win, and sometimes that's exactly what it's going to take to win this Cup Series championship. It's a throwback night here at the Iredell County Fairgrounds for the DNQ Karting Series. It's fifth stop performance night, our first of two nights here at the fairgrounds for a special post-Labor Day weekend adventure, if you will. Now, this track is similar to Bow Bridge in size, similar in banking, but not quite the same. We do have a little bit less banking to work with, but more importantly, the dimensions of the walls here are way different. 
At Millbridge, it's a little bit more straightforward. You have the concrete walls that are set up like you'd see at most racetracks. Here, we have this wooden board that's got supports on the back. It's constructed differently and it's not as even. And if you look closely here, the wall in turn four where I'm standing juts out into the racetrack. If you've ever been to Blum and Gray Stadium, you've seen how turn four juts in a little bit to the racetrack with the way the stands work and how they sit right on top of the track. It's that sort of same funneling, pinching effect that the drivers are gonna to have to work with when they come off of this corner. You go further down the racetrack towards turn one, and you see that there's a little bit more space on corner exit. But turn four has a pinching effect, and if you think of what you've seen at Dover, or maybe old Texas before the repave, where drivers would end up getting into each other off of turn two, our drivers here in the DNQ Karting Series are gonna to have to fight the same thing both nights at the Iredell County Fairgrounds. We're here again at the Iredell County Fairgrounds, and this is Adam Welsh's stomping grounds. Adam, you've won quite a few races here at the fair. What is it about this place, which I don't even know how it would relate to your driving style, why are you so good here? Um, it's the opposite of what everybody thinks. I actually have a lot of patience to race here. Um, I haven't found the fastest way around Millbridge by holding it wide open, so this just fits my driving style, the lifting, the toe and the brake. Um, We've been here with outlaw carts all the way up to these, you know, and it's uh, a lot of laps here, and it's always about taking your time, and, and, and it works out better for you. So, had a rough road course race, double points, set you back a little bit. Yeah. We're on the road to recovery here. You got three races. Can you make it happen? Uh, we'll see how it goes tonight. If we go out here with the win tonight, we'll probably show back up to the next ones, and if uh, it's a uh, lost cause, then we'll just bring the wife and Ryan out racing, and I'll drink beer and call it a day. I think either way he's going to drink beer. I, I think I think that's a safe bet. Adam Wells looking for a win here tonight. That's all right. Polo for the Carolina Racing Supplies Dash Series goes to Robert Showalter, 12.95. He will be on the outside or be on the pole with uh, Jonathan Stewart on the outside. For number two, Charlie Furman and last year's champion Alex Lacanata. Playing Donahue and Zach Campolonia in the next row. Joe Henning and Leland Lambert. Tyler Triblecock and Mike Bumgarner in the next row. <laughs> Brian Shaw <laughs> and Mrs. Kitty. You gotta wonder where like um, some some of these guys come from. You know what I mean? It's just or what the background is on the name. You know, what ethnicity is Treble? <laughs> That's what I want. Yeah. Mr. 69, David Hutchins will run out of the field for tonight's Dash Series. Well, you at home, what's the Dash Series? Here it is. Carolina Racing Supply sponsored. It's 390, and they got the small tires all the way around. So zero stagger, Bill, and we know that that does not make it very fun for driving, but very fun to watch for speed. Absolutely, especially with a real tight corner like we have here at the Iredell County Fairgrounds. That stagger that you normally would have helps you get turned, but now you got four beer cans on each corner, and it ain't gonna get you turned that good. Avenger One Man Cart Stand Camera of Jonathan Stewart in Cart Camera. Joe Henning will have the other one. Jonathan Stewart's is on backwards. It's called the Canadian Camera from Alex Lacanada, who suggested we do that as the green is out. Ashley Burnett waving the green here at the fair. And man, not only do we have to worry about the funnel cakes, but we also have to worry about the fans off of turn four and that wall on the Ultimate Racing Helmets corner cam here. Oh, looks like it almost bit somebody already. That wall sticks out really far. We've covered that before. As we're, we got the rear entry cam on the Amish running back right now. He's getting the bumper beat off by Bobby Showtime. There you can see Bobby Showtime barely turning that stern and wheel. Things handling really nice. But all the speed's out front with the Amish running back. Bill, one thing that I've seen that has not gone away over the years, and I remember when we have raced at this racetrack, is the washboard down the back stretch. Watch it. Brr, brr. You remember that sitting in the seat going down the back stretch? Oh, yeah. It vibrated you so bad. People would come out here trying to get the cart real low. They'd blow the nose off of it. and It's just one of those characteristics about this track. It only gets used a couple times a year. you got to have this thing up, riding high. Eventually, the groove will get down almost to the grass. Um, through the night, it's definitely interesting to watch how this track evolves. Charlie Furman racing Alex LaCanada extremely hard there. LaCanada thought tonight that the national championship race was uh, going on, and uh, turns out he was wrong, so he's running the dash feature tonight. Good to get some laps, though, either way. 
as you can tell, that right side's definitely lower than what it normally is going on the front stretch. Absolutely, yeah. We uh, we watched him last year. He was in it for the championship, and I I walked back in the pits, and they were slinging all kinds of tires, had spindles off, moving the seat. This year looks like they showed up a little bit closer, but they might be too scared to actually tune on it and get it fast enough to run with that Amish running back. Yeah, no doubt. Jonathan Stewart has them covered at this point in time with Showalter in the second position. You gotta love this uh, the layout here. The rides are right above the hill as a caution is out, and that'll be for Jamie Edwards. Oh. Maybe that wall bit him. Let's take a look at the replay. I think Ultimate Racing Helmets for their support for the end of this season. Bam! Boom! Man, Boom. just didn't turn on him. Got arrow tight there, huh? Yeah. Hit the McCleary wall there off of four. <laughs> That thing will jump out and bite you and bend a frame in no time. He's lucky that thing is still together. Um, right there, you can see just behind Ashley is uh, Waffle Belly turn one. And this restart is brought to you by, and you'll get annoyed of hearing this every two minutes, Professor Clutchworks coming on to sponsor the restarts here. And DNQ is Charlie Furman takes the inside with Jonathan Stewart on the outside. Interesting strategy because we expect the bottom to come in so strong. Normally the bottom is the preferred line here, but we whoa, we got a hornet's nest back there. Whoa, we <laughs> climbing walls almost upside down. Mrs. Kitty goes around. Major chase implications there. Blaine Donahue second in points oh. was involved in that God as well. Damn. Jen hits the wall again there. Let's take a look at what happened there. Luckanada sideways, nowhere to go. Blaine Donahue up the fence. Mrs. Bad Kitty went for a little bit of a ride there. Sure did, yeah. Not much you can do when you're four wide here at the fair. Absolutely not. And, I mean, I know that you've had some arguments here post-race with Dan Ridenauer, if I remember correctly. I don't remember that. Gotta love it. Sometimes <laughs> this place just brings out the best in people, doesn't it? <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> yeah. Back under green as we're in the Professor Clutchworks restart zone and see if Robert Showalter can do anything with the Amish running back. As these two are going to battle it out for the lead. Showalter to the inside in the preferred lane. Yeah, he gets a good jump there. He's able to make it stick for now, but that momentum on the top side off of four as we go on board with Jonathan Stewart in the rear entry cram, just able to pull back along the five car of Bobby Showtime and get back to the top spot. Right now, you see a little bit more yaw in that five car behind him, scrubbing just a little bit of speed. Jamie Edwards again steps on his dick there off of turn four. He's going to bring out the caution, and uh, uh, maybe he had some help there. Yeah. I'll give it to him. Yeah, it looks like he's hung up like a couple dogs there. As we watch Alex LaCanada make the move to the inside on Stewart. Cannot quite make the pass, but he's going to almost make it on Showalter as they head down into four. Stuffed it in there for sure. Right side splitter is sealed off. You got to wonder about that right front tire getting too hot, but he's got it cutting right now. Oh! And my boy just kind of ran out of talent there. Was on the, the meter and couldn't really get it done. As Stewart's driving away from the field, to some people you know, protecting the bottom. The fair race is always tough as we're at the the cam here for the Ultimate Racing Helmets uh, speed cam here. Um, the the track surface is great tonight. Stewart seems to have figured out. We'll see if Showtime can do anything with him. Wow. Bad for trouble. Jamie Edwards once again around. Treble cocks around. They about hit in the infield. <laughs> Gotta love it here. The people on the grassy knoll haven't seen a hit that hard since JFK. And there goes uh, Jen Welsh around them. Yeah, it seems like all the NDF is near the back of the field here at the fair as we go green one more time. Jonathan Stewart leading the field. As we go on board the Avenger rear entry cam, still looking back at Bobby Showtime. You got to wonder when he's going to throw this uh, move on him, try to get the lead away from Jamie Edwards. But, man, Jamie's really got this thing hooked up. You see the drive off is just excellent. Yeah, it looks like Bobby's having a hard time keeping that left front on the, the inside there. He's, he's about a half a lane up, and when a, a fresh surface like this doesn't get a lot of run, as we got a couple of guys almost knocking down the wall. 
Jamie Edwards has hit that wall already, and he is he about ate it again. This is going to be renamed from the McCleary wall here <laughs> if he keeps it up. Yeah, you can see how much different the surface is from the beginning of the race. You can see it's almost taken on a white haze. Um, something to watch throughout the night. The track changes a ton. You'll see that angel dust get really bad towards the end of the night. You know, this 92 car is really fast right now as we get our Nitro 5 to go caution. You know, if he runs that same setup in some classes later on, I don't think it's going to work. Professor Clutchwork restart zone as we go green. Back underway. Here's where it usually gets ugly towards the back of the field, Jay-Z. We start to see it looks like an Antifa the ride there in the middle of the These guys are just fighting to make their name known here. Oh, Brian Shaw in the wall oh. again tonight. Cole Gutmeestad hit so hard, I think his helmet just hit the wall. Let's take a look at that again. Uh, I don't know if he got it there, but it sure looked like it. Tough break, and uh, you're going to see that here at the Outer County Fair. Kind of like a little mini Martinsville. As we're in the Professor Clutchwork restart zone, single file, because these guys can't get their shit together as we go back. I'm running running back still out front. Bobby Showtime. Just too free through one and two to uh, stay with the Amish running back. Running back's got two hands on the ball and is as Lacanada goes three wide, gets shit canned to the back. He went from third to fifth in a hurry there. Not going to have enough to No, he was sitting pretty in second place there, third place there for a minute, and just keeps getting effed up on these restarts and shuffled back. It did not protect the bottom enough, um, and uh, he's lost positions because of it. It's not like he's really earned that reputation driving, especially in the national championship as the white flag is out and it looks like Jonathan Stewart, the Amish running back, the number 92 machine is going to come down and take the victory in the Carolina Racing Supply Dash Series feature. Let's go down and talk to him. Jonathan Stewart, your Dash winner here on Throwback Night at the Iredale County Fairgrounds. Jonathan, I noticed you... Uh, you played the choose cone pretty hard. You went inside, you went outside. Was there sort of a strategy to your success to chooses throughout the race to try and set yourself up for the five lap dash? Uh, I felt like it didn't matter where I chose. Just wanted to have fun, see what would happen. Had a good party with it. What was it like racing with Robert, especially on that last restart when, when you knew it was for all the marbles? Yeah, it was cool. I mean, I knew he was going to race me clean and all that, so that was nice. And yeah, just having a fun time. I, I hit on something in the setup, and I don't know what it is. So. And, and to win here at the Idaho County Fairgrounds with this very decidedly throwback vibe, does it carry a little bit more meaning compared to a regular night in d &Q? Yeah, I mean, we only get to do it once a year, too, so it's pretty special that way. Jonathan Stewart, your dash winner here at the Idaho County Fairgrounds. Robbie Showtime, Robert Showalter, runner-up here in the dash slash. Did you need... Uh, a little bit more time, car. What was the difference between you and Jonathan tonight? Uh, he was just getting me up the corners really bad. Uh, I don't know, maybe set up motor, but I just didn't have what he had there. But uh, we'll take a second, uh, finish the race here at the fair. Uh, throwback night, with throwback mustache, throwback wood walls. So uh, yeah, usually we don't finish Tuka here, so I'll take a second. Um, congratulations to him. Uh, just we didn't have what we what he had. Sounds like a thoroughly enjoyed night for Robert Showalter here at the Iredale County Fairgrounds. Charlie Furman with one of his best runs of the year in the Dash Class here in the Throwback Classic at the Iredale County Fairgrounds. Big podium for you to get it here on one of the biggest nights of the year for DNQ. What does it mean to you? Oh, it's great. I'm happy to be in the podium, top three again. Last two weekends or two races, I had a fourth place finish, which isn't great but isn't bad I suppose but the road course is what really beat me up I lost some points and finished last there but I'm really happy I got third I beat I think all the guys that are in front of me in points so it was, it was a really good day I, I like this track a lot I think we should cover more what makes this unique especially compared to Millbridge I think it's just it's flatter it's got a little bit of tighter corner and it's just it's narrow it's hard to pass and it's, it makes it for fun so a lot of beating and banging as long as it's you know not too outrageous but it was a lot of fun. What was the fighting like getting through the field? Because you were in the thick of it up until just about the very end. Yeah, it, I don't know. It's you, you, you get pushed out wide, and then you can cut the corner and slide underneath someone or try sliding up in front of them. It's just 
it's really fun here. That's I like this here. I think we should, like I said, I think we should come in way more often. A special place, a meaningful place, and a big result for Charlie Furman. P3 tonight in the Dash class. Who do you guys got to win this cup championship? Man, the camera's on Mark Ellis right now, and he's had a really strong run. Uh, but eight points is not a lot. There's more genders in elementary school than there are points cushioning him right now. We'll have to see how this shakes out after the fair. I got Bobby Showtime. Eight points is nothing, and he just had like 50 laps around this surface, starting on the front row. My man's going to get out there and get it done. And Mark Ellis, he's can't make any mistakes. He's starting back, and this track is just so treacherous. Escape Pool Cleaning Cup Series, SRI Polar World will go to Robert Showalter. We're at 12.540. He'll share the front row with Kyle Beattie, a past champion in the USEC Series. Right over to Dylan Latour and Derek Kale. Escape Pool Cleaning Cup Series, row number three, Jimmy Allen Jr. Welcome back and the bad kitty, Adam Welch. Chris Bailey and Mike Contorino, two past DQ champions. Row number six, Levi Hurley and Mickey Roo. Curtis Markham and Mark Ellis, one of our lead point leaders here in the next row. Alfredo Hidalgo and Jail Baby in the next row. <laughs> Aaron Hodges <laughs> and Ron Schutte. The next row is getting through the Cup Series. Zach Campolone and CJ Whitson. Jared Norris will round out the field for tonight's Escape Pool Cup Series feature. A couple in card cameras tonight. Kyle Beatty has one, or Adam Wells, not sure which one. Dylan Latour. We'll have the in-card camera as well. And, Bill, we've run this race quite a few times as the green is out for the Cup Series race at the Iredell County Fair. Just a beautiful tradition for eight years. Oh! And about gets wrecked. Adam Welsh yeah. about gets Dale Earnhardt down the back stretch. My goodness. <laughs> and Dylan that Latour goes around, one of our in-card cameras, and that's finally going to bring out the cost. And they wrecked about eight times but didn't bring it out. <laughs> That is classic. Oh, God. Ironell County Fair. Turn one, lap one, wreck the leader. <laughs> yeah, Latour just got punted by either Chris Bailey or Mike Contarino. Not sure which. That sucks as we're in the Professor Clutch Work restart zone. I want to thank them for their sponsorship for the last couple of races of the season. As we go green, Showalter took the outside, Jay-Z. Why would you take the outside here at the fair? Yeah, you don't got to turn as much wheel into it. You know, you got like 8, 10 more horsepower in these Cup Series engines. Uh, you get a straighter drive off running that high line. You know what I mean? Look at him hang that ass end out there. Selling some t-shirts as Bobby Showtime as the field thunders by. Girl, you looks good. Need to hang that ass out. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that could be a song. Yeah, he's got all that experience from the previous race. He knows the grip level in this racetrack. And he got beat on the outside a bunch. So now it's his turn to get that top line, get that thing rolling. I mean, you, now it looks like he's tightened this thing up a little bit. You know, not quite as sideways as he was before, stretching his legs. Right there in the middle of this hornet's nest is our points leader, Mark Ellis. Like we talked before the race, he can't have a bad night. And here he is about to get dumped. He is trying to force his pronouns down the inside here, but can't make any headways. We're on the rear bumper cam of Kyle Beatty, the Avenger one-man stand rear bumper cam. And it's kind of just showing how these guys are hanging it out there in the Cup Series, the, the big bad boys of D&Q carrying a couple extra mile an hour down the straightaway as Bobby Showtime sails it through three and four. Notice he's about a full cart length up off the bottom, making his own line, kind of like the Bobby Showtime line around the fair here this evening. One thing I do know from running this race, especially in the pack, it's extremely hard to gain any track position, and you actually do have to lift a little bit, Bill, and that's where Mark Ellis about climbs the wall there on the entry. We've seen that happen a couple of times here as well, but you actually got to drive it here, and it's not like the big track at Millbridge. A lot of finesse that has to go into racing. Yeah, Mark Ellis, I think, watched Anthony Macri at Port Royal a few too many times banging that right rear off of one, but it's, we got somebody around in turn number four again. Dylan Latour goes around. Tough break for him again. So that's two for him yeah, as we sure go green again. Break. Might just be out of talent at this point. Bobby Showtime makes that outside lane work really well for him. And we got a couple hung up on the inside of turn number one and two. Three let's wide see. middle for Kyle Beatty. And uh, let's take a look at the replay and see what happened. Yeah. Rear entry cam. 
just goes just got involved there at the end. Not yeah. really sure. It's, it's probably the only footage we have of that. We're in the Professor Clutchworth's restart zone. Adam Welsh there on the front side. He needs a good night, too. I mean, he's it's about 140 back, and we do not drop your worst finish for these last couple races. So starting the next race, we will not, we will not be dropping um, your finishes. So where you finish is where you are. We, have, we do drop the worst finish up until this point after tonight. So a lot of guys banking on that one last bad night. Ultimate okay, racing helmets, corner cam. Look at who's up in third place. Out of nowhere. Mark Ellis up to fourth. Jimmy Allen Jr. in third. So you go on board with Kyle Beatty. On your right is the live camera. On the left is the in-cart camera. And this is just great footage. Yeah, you see some classic fair moves there. Door slamming in the middle of the straightaway. That's oh, no. how you pass here. <laughs> wow. We stay green. <laughs> Got to wipe their brains off the wall there off of turn four, but we stay green. Oh, there it is. Finally, they finished it off. Aaron Hodges goes around off the corner, and that's going to bring out the caution. We'll be single file here. Yep, there it is. Single file restarts. You get three attempts, and then when we throw the nitro five to go caution, we will go back double fire for one restart. Let's watch this one from the Ultimate Racing Helmets cam. They sell Bell and Zamp helmets, so if you need a helmet, give them a call. Oh, wow. Man, some of these guys just are going to need, a, and gonna need a brand new R Bell RS7 because <laughs> they're all going to blow yeah. their tops because they're all getting pissed at each other. <laughs> yeah. I think we time traveled there a little bit. That was poor editing. <laughs> <laughs> We've just taken the green there off of four. All right. Back green. Hopefully, we can stay green. Showalter leading. Haven't even gotten to the five to go yet, but. Single file is what they need to be watching this race so far. There we Mark go, Ellis. Mark Ellis. Hey. Yeah. Oof. Oh, again. Jimmy? Is that Jimmy? Jimmy Allen Jr. was uh, testing the entry there into one. Professor Clutch Works getting a workout here off of turns three and four. Those things got to be hot by this point. Mark Ellis trying to run down the bad kitty, staying in touch with Bobby Showtime. Showtime just needs a couple clean laps here to stretch his legs as Mark Ellis just peeking inside the bad kitty. Can't make it work. Gives him a little shove through one and two. Still not quite enough. The track position has been so important here. It's, it's impressive seeing Mark Ellis move through the field the way he has. Uh, not many people have been able to do that tonight. Hats off to him so far. Hopefully he can keep his nose clean. And this, you see the top three on the racetrack are the top three in points. The cream always rises to the top, but that's off to J.R. Norris. We just saw how to spin, and he's back up to fourth having a great night. Yeah, sometimes you get lucky here, and uh, J.R. Norris is both good and lucky. You can see a four-wheel slide off of four. One of the hardest things to hook up here for the crew chiefs and mechanics on these machines is the drive off of four. You see that four-wheel slide, that wall will come out to bite you, so far, J.R. Norris is able to keep it clean. Oh, behind him, a little bit of action, though. Working their way through some lap traffic here. Oh, no, never mind. That's, yeah, yeah there's some lap traffic that's caught up in there. It's holding up Ellis. Holding up, oh, no, that's J.R. Norris that got by Ellis. What happened? I have no idea. The camera looked away for two seconds. And all of a sudden, our points leader is in trouble. Chris Bailey trying to get underneath him. It's a shit show out there. There it is. It's about to get even better with the Nitro 5 to go. We're going to go to the Professor Clutchworks restart zone, and we'll see what happens here. Adam Welsh needs a win. Very good here. Showalter, been tough to beat all night, though. And we'll see what happens here in the last five laps. As we go green, will they stay green for five laps? We're about ready to find out. I doubt it. <laughs> J.R. <laughs> Norris powering by on the outside. He went from fourth to now fighting for the second spot. Ellis dropping back like Biden in a prelim. But <laughs> I keep my eyes open. That Ellis might make it back to the front. Getting ejected faster than a pilot of a F-35 as J.R. Norris up the <laughs> racetrack into the loose dust. Yeah, Chris Bailey made a, a really sharp cut on the backstretch of the last lap to protect that bottom. But uh, you, you wonder if the top line's the way to be. Bobby Showtime showing him how to get it done. But that was a weird wall ride, and Mark Ellis almost put himself on his head. 
as Chris <laughs> Bailey slams the door. Second time he's done that. White flag out for Robert Showalter. Mark Ellis needs the points. Does he make the bump and run on Chris Bailey as they head down into four? Showalter is going to cruise to victory, and let's see what happens for that third position. No! Woo. Contact. Didn't get it done. Robert Showalter clearly learned a few things between the dash and the cup feature. He's in victory lane here in one of the biggest races of the night. And one of the biggest weeks of the year for the DNQ Karting Series. Robert, what'd you pick up from the dash feature that you used in the cup feature? Uh, I, I just came and test uh, Saturday night with this cart. I didn't come test with the dash <laughs> cart. And uh, I went back to the shop, went to work, made sure I had a couple sets of tires so my uh, stagger stayed the same from practice to race. And... Uh, Man, that thing was on rails. Um, restarts were awesome. Uh, thanks to Adam Welsh for not just driving inside of me and, and wrecking me on there. Um, you know, he's running for a championship too with uh, me and Ellis, so uh, really appreciate him running me clean. Um, yeah, KSR horsepower. Um, Phantom, recon chassis. I mean, it's the thing was on rails. I can't, it was driving itself. How impressive is that trophy? fields? get a hold of that and get that over the camera because that's that's not something you get every day in DNQ karting. What do you think of that? Got me a little throwback trophy, I believe, right? That's sort of the idea. Yeah, right. So this is the uh, first time I won at the uh, fair. We usually got bad luck. We were running second here last year. Uh, rain fell out of the sky. We spun out. We ended up finishing 10th. Uh, they went back green like two laps after I spun out and, and then they rained it out. So, um, yeah, um, they were driving like Cadillac. Like I, I was just for a ride. Bobby Showalter is the headliner tonight at Iredell County winner in the cup class. <laughs> Out of Welch with a hard fought runner up finish in the cup class. How much, especially in those last five laps, were points on your mind in the championship chase as you were fighting Robert for the win? No, not really. I said if I didn't get the win, you are probably done for the year. If you can't win the championship, what do you, what do you win for? So, um, I might show up for a couple races at the end of the year, but um, he had us beat and I wasn't going to do anything to take that away from him. Uh, last Last year we were wicked fast and uh, and he raised me clean so uh, payback right there. What's your experience been like over the last few days here at the fairgrounds and, and how much do you enjoy this annual adventure for DNB Carter? I mean honestly I look forward to this race every year. Uh, Last year I think I ran 200 or something laps between the week. Um, this year we, we were only able to come on Friday and uh, I won, my nephew won, uh, my customer won, so we slept the night on Friday, which was fun. Um, the kids got to race, so uh, this is an awesome track for the kids. Teach them to lift and teach them how to uh, race without, you know, just having a wide open towel. They get uh, uh, this, this year so far, knowing that it's the last one, it's kind of disappointing. It's bittersweet to not get the win. Now. A productive year all around for Adam Welch, runner up tonight in the Cup class. Chris Bailey with a massive, massive P3 in the Cup class tonight at the Iredell Family Caregrounds starting fit stop performance night. Chris, you and Mark Ellis had a titanic battle the last five laps what was that like trying to defend your position from behind the wheel of this cart yeah i mean it was tough i mean everything was real tight and everybody was basically running in each other trying to wreck people and all that you know and uh, mark and i always race each other clean and you know we both showed that tonight um but you know sometimes when you get drilled from the back there ain't nothing you can do and you know it happened to him several times it happened to baby before you know it happened to me so you know you just have to hold on and do the best you can you know and uh just uh fight for what you can get <laughs> The podium finish, I know, carries a lot of meaning. It's one of your best runs of the year. But to do that here on this weekend, big as it is for this series, what does that mean to you? It's big. I mean, you know, this track's – I mean, it's, it's tough. Uh, it's uh, normally really wet, um, you know, and that, actually the night it dried out some. But uh, it's tight. There's no room to really pass, you know, and it's not like Millbridge where you got two lanes you can drive on the outside and go. You really can't do that here because they can run you in the wall. So uh, you really have to – you know, it, it sucks because – now, I did choose outside one time, and it did okay, but, man, at any point, I could have got done. So, uh, you know, you kind of just had to sacrifice position, stay on the inside, and just hope for the best, you know, and make your way up the best you can. Do you think there's an opportunity for you to use this finish as a momentum springboard going back to the Bridge for the final few races of the year? 
Yeah, uh, I've been off all this year. Uh, tires uh, really bit me this year. Um, I was trying something that I did, uh, some stuff I did last year, and this year just wouldn't work. There's just no speed in it. And uh, so a friend of mine helped me out on some tires. Uh, we found some older ones, and uh, they come to find that older ones are better. And uh, so we found some older tires, and uh, we ground on them a little bit and stuff, and it's a lot better. So I think we got something to go with that. Chris Bailey, you can tell just by how much sweat he's got on his brow. It was a hard-fought, well-earned P3 tonight at the Iredell County Fairgrounds. All right, J.R. Norris, talk about that race. A really good finish for you. Um, starting to make some progress here. It, uh, yeah, we, it didn't start out that way, man. We, um, as soon as I went out on the racetrack or I hit the gas to go out on the racetrack, it popped the chain. So I didn't get any practice. So I just kind of left it. I was afraid that we were going to. I was afraid I was going to have too much gear, and um, started getting strung out. The cart was handling so good, and just kind of slowly picking them off. But as we ran about five, six laps, I could feel it winding out. And I mean, I knew there was nothing I could do, but the top was a faster groove, like a, a, like a line off the bottom. But I had to run the bottom to keep the motor pulling. And damn, me and Adam, you know, I, Adam does a whole lot for me. So me and him were racing real hard, and he kind of. Got me a little slide job and I was trying to be greedy and I should, probably should have backed off and it wouldn't have cost me the positions it did. But I mean, I hung on there and I knew the last five laps were gonna be rough. I was gonna have to give it all I had. But I mean, we've been slowly making progress. If I can just keep all this bad stuff happening, you know, uh, we had a really good run going at the road course. And I don't know, maybe I'll get a win here for long. Jaron Norris, a solid top 10 finisher. Uh, always great to come out here and check out the fair jay-z the rides you don't even know who's put them together if they were <laughs> drinking when they put them together but uh, i'm sure they're safe they only ride on a truck down the highway all year <laughs> it's like when you hop in that street stock your buddy put together and you see the door bars only have three spot welds on them each you go yeah maybe i'll stay out of this one you know what i mean <laughs> i hope the cotter pin is still inside this thing you know you're just sitting there you're, you're doing a visual nut and bolt on them every time you ride sure. but always always great to have the outer county fair and we're getting ready to start the USAC series feature. And I uh, want to thank Fitstop Performance for their sponsorship of this event. And uh, just a great night one of two. We've got another night here to, to go. Cody Sauls is on the pole for the USAC feature with a 12.610. Adam Welsh and Tyler Sandmeyer will share the front row. Row number two, Cody Sauls and Kyle Beattie. Steven Tauges and Mike Melton. Uh, Mike Contarino and Todd Chafee. Desi Tauges and Dennis Kirk. Ivan Gomstad and David Krops make another start here at DQ. Stephen Broy, who took a hellacious flip in this race last year, will round out the field. And here is the USAC Series rules. Clones, 425. And uh, Ivan Gudmistad. Man, he's the points leader, but man, has he been struggling here. It's, it's amazing when you get off the baseline racetrack, how much uh, out to lunch some people can be, as Jeremy Burnett right there, giving the one to go. Ashley and Jeremy Burnett, they said they love working the fair so much. They just really enjoy being here. Every time of year it comes by, they get so excited. As we have an Avenger Cartman stand, holy shit. With Mike Melton and Adam Welsh, I can't even talk. And uh, We're going to see the Sandman on the outside road, Jay-Z. You had some good races with him as they go green in the house car. Yeah, we've, we've uh, rubbed some side panels before in the past. He's kid is a guy is a hell of a driver, and we'll see if he can hang it on the outside. I know in the flat carts, that was a place to be, but doesn't seem that's holding true in the champ carts as he falls all the way back to fifth place after starting outside pole. Bob, who is most likely to go over in this class? Because there is definitely going to be one on its lid before we're done. Well, at first I was going to say Daniel Jones because he just got sacked for probably about the 15th time on this game that I'm watching. <laughs> as we're li as we're uh, talking about this live, uh, I don't know, to be honest with you. Somebody in the back is probably going to hit that patch at NDF. He's on board with past champion Mike Melton, who uh, struggled the beginning half of the year, but seems to have gone back to his uh, ways that he's had in the past, starting to run a little bit. Yeah, this thing doesn't look too bad tonight. Look at as he sticks it underneath, take two for one right there and goes to second, trying to run down our leader. Tide's turn. Sometimes you got to be lucky here at the fair. 
Jay-Z, Cody Saul's another driver. Got the pole tonight. Definitely getting a lot better the more he races. And uh, that, that cart's in that 22 cart in fourth position. And he was towards the back of the field at the start of the year. What usually happens with somebody? Is it just seat time or is it setup stuff as well? It's seat time and buttering up the right person in the pits after the race. You know, maybe if they like you, they give you a little tip about a you know, cross percentage here, stagger there, you know, the, the right dr front driver for the fair race, that kind of thing. Um, it's, it's tough to have success overnight, but Cody Sells over the last three or four weeks has been putting together a strong run and uh, making a good showing here as that uh, SK Ego cart is running away with it here this evening. Yeah, the Bad Kitty has won here multiple times, and there he is out leading the singer. Sal's about hits the LJ McCleary wall off of turn four. That thing comes out at least four feet from when you come off the corner, doesn't it, Bill? We, I've hit it a couple times. I know that. It'll bite you, and it'll rip the rear axle right out of the thing there. You can see the big, the amount that it absolutely sticks out and grabs you. Very what gets me, Jay-Z, is the bracing. The bracing on that wall tells you it's been hit a couple times. <laughs> Few people want to test it year after year, though. Uh, LJ McCleary, most famously, but we've seen three or four different guys tag the right rear so far this evening. It's a lot like the Thomas Markham backstretch at AAR Speedway, Bill. You remember that one? <laughs> Woo! Yeah, adequately named. Oh, Gummy Stad, your points leader, having a little mess there with Todd Chafee, who's second in points. And uh, the point standings, man, they're pretty tight. So tonight, anybody that can have a good run will try, uh, try to close the gap on Gundystad, who is the points leader, surprisingly, after the double points event that he won at the road course. But right now, it is all Adam Wells. I don't think anybody's got anything for him right now as he is cruising around this racetrack. Now, those SKE carts are always very strong here. Him and Kyle B always run very well, and, and they're definitely showing that they still got it tonight. Hey, he's got that nice high entry, gets that cart rotated, drives down the hill, so to speak, and gets a, a better straighter drive off of four there, especially as we're on board the Ultimate Racing Helmets corner cam. As you see these go-karts just constantly push the envelope, fighting for grip as they come off of turn four here. Now you definitely don't want to keep it pinched down off of four, but you want to take all the racetrack that you can take. And as you can tell now that it's strung out, everybody's doing a pretty good job making that corner nice and tight off the corner as Sandmeyer working on Sal's, Saul's. And uh, looks like he hit the wall there, Jay-Z, a little bit. He, he might have. Was, oh, that right front is folded in. Crash oh! damage for Tyler uh, Sandmeyer. Hit that patch of NDF, Bill, there into turn one. We've seen it been hit a couple times tonight, but it finally bit Sandmeyer. He's still wheeling it. I wonder what Jeremy feels like when he runs that house car out here and comes home with a broken spindle. <laughs> Sandmeyer still digging. Should have put Brent Cruz in it. That'll bring out the Nitro. Five to go caution. Sandmeyer's going to pull that thing into the pits, and we're going to watch this five to go. Let's see what happened to him there on this entry. Looks like he just got a little bit too greedy there. Yep. You know, he just wanted to arc it a little bit farther than he had been and just ran out of room. All the Professor Clutch Works restart zone about to get a workout here as we got five laps to go. We'll see what Adam Welsh can do and if he can hold off all the absolute disastrous stuff that can happen here in these five to go cautions. That turn one is treacherous on any restart, especially with five to go. Bad Kitty able to get out front just for a moment, but he's got company behind him beating the back bumper off of that thing. Kyle Beattie hanging tough in third, putting him in an SKE sandwich. Not sure who that car is, but uh... stacked three wide here off of four. Caution is out. Somebody skiing. Crops the let's take a look. Yeah, let's take a look at what happened. Ah, just a little hook. Saul's yeah. got hooked by Chaffee. Desi Tao just piled in along with Mike Contarino. We're gonna go for another restart. Only a few laps left, and we'll see if the bad kitty can hold off Mike Melton, who seemed like he had a pretty good charge there towards the late stages of. the Mike Mountain definitely came on strong. The track came to him. You can see how much it's glazed off. And Mike Melton beating the back bumper off of the bad kitty. SKE teammate Kyle Beattie able to slide up into second and protect the bad kitty uh, momentarily from the heat of Magic Mike Melton. 
White, White flag in the air. One more lap to go on tonight's action. Looks like Adam Welsh is going to take home the victory with Mike Melton in second. And, oh, my goodness, Gudmistad had a good rebound from a terrible night. Let's go down and talk to our winner. Adam Welch here. You got the win you wanted. You said after the cup feature you'd be disappointed if you couldn't leave here on a high note. So to finish off the season with a victory here and to close out the night as well, how does that – allow you to sort of retrospect across the year and, and how does that sort of change the way you look at things? I mean, honestly, we've had a really great year. Um, we always have fun out here at the fair, but the year really went south at the road course. Uh, broken chain first lap and a blown up motor first lap of the feature. So uh, we, we lost touch of the leaders. Um, tonight was a, a good points line, but it wasn't the best because Showalter won and he's ahead of us in points after the broken chain and stuff. Um, but to win the last buggy race here on treads is pretty cool. Um, I think we won the first. No, I, don't, I don't know if we won the first one or not, but um, I love this place. Uh, I got to run 20 laps right there, racing the mic around, trying to figure out what I needed to do for a five to go caution, and uh, it all worked out. Um, fun racing with Mike and Kyle ended up squeaking out a third, so that's awesome to be one three. If you throw back trophy as well, I think your daughter might have snug off with it back there in the corner, but neat little thing to take home, right? Yeah, it's always fun to come here and get the throwback trophies and stuff. Um, last year we got two that reminded me of my 94, 95. Uh, flat car championships so it's pretty cool to end up with something vintage and something cool looking and uh, put it up on the mantle just like the rest of them and a good case of pbr too yeah yeah it'll be all right nobody complains about that adam welch winner tonight in the usac class here at the iredale county fairgrounds runner up finish from mike oh, and mike he didn't even get the chance to run in the dash but did a really nice job of taking advantage of what was happening in front of you those first few laps. What was that like from your perspective? And walk us through, or walk us through that run up to P3. Oh, uh, well, uh, P2. But. At the end. Uh, and, uh, I was just talking about the first five laps because you had to get to P3 from about P7, P8 first. Uh, broke a motor and uh, qualifying, so that sucks to put us behind so we didn't get to run the dash. So I didn't even really know what I had at all, period. Um, we ran really good about two two years ago. We ran really good here, so that's the setup that we stuck back in it. Um, obviously, it's still pretty good. But uh, now the 22 and, and uh, 21 were battling pretty hard and got hooked, and I just I was in the right place at the right time trying to stay out of that mess. And uh, So anyway, I just settled in there in second. And, uh, I, just, I needed long runs. I didn't need those all them cautions back to back to back. I feel like... Um, I feel like me and Adam were pretty even, so the whichever cart was out front was the one that could uh, could win the race. So I tried to get him out here on entry. I just couldn't clear him. So anyway, it was a good race. Um, Wayne had a good run a long time. So just thank Stephen Talgis uh, for helping us get this thing here and all the work we do on him uh, trying to get here. So but with my schedule, I just hadn't been able to run good. So anyway, it feels good. Come out here with a second, and uh, it's not tore up. Fun racing with these guys again, so it's been a minute, so I appreciate it. How different is it fighting through the pack the way you did at the beginning of the race and then trying to run down Adam to get the win at the end? You end up P2, but I, I would imagine those take two different mindsets, really, yeah. because the object or the objective is so different. Yeah, so the biggest thing is um, watching the guys in front of you and trying to anticipate when you get if they get into each other, where they're going to go, right? And um, so I felt like the bottom was the safest place the way they kept jacking up the 21. I was like, well, I can get by both of them if they do it again, which they did over there off of two. Um, but once I got in, the biggest thing was to try not to overdrive. Um, I could see Adam getting closer to me as we ran. Um, so I just was trying to figure out what line I could try. Do I go a little deeper here? Do I do this there? Um, just trying to back the corner up maybe. Uh, all, all of it, I was closing in on him. So... Um, like I said, I feel like we were even, and uh, the card out front was the card that won the race. So that's how it ends up. Big finish tonight for my belt and PD tonight in the USAC class here at Iredell County. Third place tonight for Kyle Betty in the USAC class here at the Iredell County Fairgrounds. And it was just wild for you all night because you had Adam and Mike that were able to get away, but you were right in the thick of everything for all the 25 laps. So. When you compare this place to Millbridge, and given that it is more narrow and a little bit tighter, how much more intense does that make mid-pack racing like what you dealt with tonight? Um, I mean, Millbridge gets pretty intense mid-pack too. There's multiple lanes and you can move around and stuff. So in that regard, you can run a lot wider at Millbridge. But here, 
Uh, it seems like the guys on the inside, I don't know if they can't control their cars or don't know how to use the brakes or lift or whatever, but I just kept getting run into and run into and run into. And like when you get behind somebody, you don't have to hit them every corner. So it's a choice with the driver. Right? I guess the, the people that were behind me felt like they needed to hold it wide open and just run into my left rear over and over and over again. And all that was doing was letting the guys out in front of me get further away. Um, once we had that long green flag run in the beginning, I was able to get a little bit of separation behind me and then run, I think, the same pace as Mike and Adam for a long time. Um, I think it was a matter of track position at that point, which I couldn't get. And then, you know, on the restarts, Adam and Mike and me were all so even that they could start side by side and without running into Mike, there was no real way to get around him. And I didn't want to run into him just to pass him. One time I did get by him and then he got right back by me. So it was a good race between the three of us. What makes running the Iredell County Fairgrounds so special to you as a driver and a long time competitor in DNQ Carter? Uh, I've been running the fair for a really, really, really long time with the wing carts and, and then now both my kids are running it with the box stocks and beginner box stocks and stuff. So for me to come out of here and be able, still be able to run it with the buggy and the and the flat cart is a lot of fun. Um, the wing carts were are always going to be special for me, right? Wing cart racing, but um, these are still a lot of fun. It gives me a chance to to still get out and race with the guys. Big P three third place tonight for Kyle Betty in the USAC class. Take a look at results for the Escape Pool Cup Series feature. Show Walter gets a clutch win. Welsh second, Bailey third, but Curtis Markham definitely somebody we want to touch on. The eighth place finish, pretty good night for him. A lot of cup cards here. Yeah, old man's got some laps around here and definitely paid off. Joey comes home with a top 10. He started way back. Yeah, JR Norris again. I think he started scratching the field and made his way up to seventh. I know he was fighting for the lead there towards the end of the race, but the, the field is just so compact in a small track like this, you can get freight train real quick and he ended up seven. Carolina Racing Supply Dash Series, Jonathan Stewart, Showalter, Furman will be your top three. Leland Lambert, a solid top five finish. Yeah, he's actually working the carnival after the features here tonight. Goes back over and uh, runs the Delta World. So he had to get out of here a little bit early. Couldn't quite get, make make his way to the podium, but a heck of a run. Yeah, against Stewart's go-kart just looked so good tonight. Uh, I mean, he wasn't fighting the wheelie. He had just the, the right amount of opposite lock on it. That thing was a rocket ship, and he keeps clearing tech. So I know there's there's some rumors on the internet about you know things that are happening, but you know DNQ throws out everybody. The, the tech is second to none, and uh, so far so good. Fit Stop Performance USAC Series feature, and after a horrible wreck, which left an injury to Steven Broy's foot, he comes back and finishes fifth. So we got to give him props for a good run. Started dead last, too. Came from deep in the field. Was able to make the right moves tonight on a treacherous racetrack. Bad kitty out of Welsh, class of the field, though. Absolutely hauled ass the entire race. Um, Magic Mike Delton, how do you keep the runs off? Yeah, the, the short wheelbase on those SKE chassis seem to be the ticket here at the tight and treacherous uh, carnival that we were racing at this evening. And Melton, that wily veteran, he's been around DNQ for a long time, uh, managed to be the meat and the sandwich and break up that podium and get himself home in the second place. Well, what an amazing night of action we saw here at the Iodell County Fair. Be back tomorrow for more for night two for the Fitstop Performance Night. Well, it's night two here for the DNQ Iredell County Fair Race, and we've got even more excitement in store for you. But before we dive back into the heart pounding racing, let's take a look around. You'll see some of the fair's young explorers enjoying the sights and perhaps a glimpse of the magnificent show cows resting in their barns. Tonight, we are shifting gears to bring you the Fitstop Performance Night Two. Get ready for the Bud Heavy Class, Arca Class, and the highly anticipated National Championship Series. Here at the stands at the Iredell County Fairgrounds, it's a bit of a different setup than what we have at Millbridge, where we usually race in TNQ karting. But this is a different track and a different challenge for all of these drivers to try and tackle over the course of the evening. Now, last night, we noticed 
more than anything else, that the track did not retain water the way we thought it would. As we progressed through the program, drivers started shifting more and more towards the high lane on the racetrack. And there was not as much water in the surface as we thought would be there when we got to the features. The water truck broke. That's part of the reason why we didn't have as much water as we thought we would. And we have even less water to work with tonight. So this track is going to be drier. This track is likely going to be even more top dominant than it was. And you're going to see an absolute free for all, I think, in a lot of the early stages of these races and on restarts to try and make it up into that top lane to get the preferred track position and get in the preferred line to try and start making your moves to the front. National Championship practice and qualifying is underway. Well, let's go down and talk to a driver who is here enjoying watching this racing tonight. You never know who will show up at DNQ karting events, and it seems like throughout the season we've got some distinguished guests who have come to join us for many of our races. Tonight here, night two of Fit Stop Performance out of the Iredell County Fairgrounds, Parker Retzlaff, driver in the NASCAR Xfinity Series, has joined us. So, Parker, what brought you out to watch the DNQ karting action this evening? Yeah, I mean, I just heard about it today when I was at the Jordan Anderson Racing Shop. Uh, a guy, Rowan Mason, and uh, a guy used to work with us, DJ, they're both racing tonight. So I just uh, decided to come check it out and uh, support them a little bit and uh, see what's going on. Do you have any sort of experience with carts like these, or is it just like, I just want to learn this? No, I have no clue. I never did any go-karting or anything like that growing up. So I'm just coming to hang out and uh, be like everyone else and watch them racing. Is this the kind of thing that you would not mind seeing getting put into the sim? We know that uh, I guess both of us have uh, a, a lot of uh, experience with iRacing. Yeah, I mean, I think anything that they can put into the sim could be fun with your friends or, you know, some official races. So I think anything that they can put into the sim or, you know, real life seems like a really fun thing to do. So anything I think is good. Also, bonus question because I can. Anything you're looking forward to in the uh, Season 4 build coming out tomorrow? Uh, I'm not sure. I haven't been doing my a uh, lot of irising stuff, but I'm. Uh, I did a little bit of Kansas yesterday, and I'm looking forward to getting back into it once the season's over. What's the most exciting thing about tonight? What are you most looking forward to this evening? I mean, just seeing everyone out here. There's so many, you know, people that uh, I know and are just, you know, hanging out down here. It's just cool to see everyone hanging out and have a little bit of fun. And how fun is it to see so many people from the industry as well? You know, it's it's not just people that love karting, but it's a lot of people that you see in the garage over the weekends. Yeah, that's the thing. It's just a lot of people who are just, who do a lot of NASCAR stuff during the week that are just coming to have a little bit of fun during the week and take it a little bit less serious. Parker Retzlaff here, normally representing Jordan Anderson Racing. Tonight, just a fan next to the sands here at the Iredell County Fairgrounds. To the beautiful throwback paint scheme, Piedmont Airlines from Jamie Edwards. James Pike has some interesting insight for tonight's for, uh, event. It's a different setup now as we approach the end of the DNQ karting season, and we have some new classes, same drivers, but a little bit different organization. So we're here at the big board at Iredell County. We're going to show you how this is going to work starting tonight at the fairgrounds and then in October and then November as well. Now, if you look here, normally we would have Pro Cup and Bush represented on our qualifying timesheets and our starting grids. However, we have two new classes. We have the national class here, the national championship, and we have the ARCA class here. What we have done is we have combined the drivers who competed in the Bush class and the Pro Cup class throughout the season. And the top 10 in points from both the Bush and the Pro Cup classes advance to the national championship. If you're familiar with the way the old USAR Hooters Pro Cup worked, where they took the top drivers in points from the North and the South Division, and they had the opportunity to compete directly against each other towards the end of their seasons back in the late 90s and the early 2000s, it's exactly the same sort of concept. Everybody else heads into ARCA. So ARCA is essentially the rest of everyone that competed in Pro Cup and Bush throughout the course of 2023. And then to cap it all off, the Bud Heavy class. Drivers basically racing Predator carts, but you have to have a minimum of a 200 pound weight if you're the driver and the carts have to weigh at least 425 pounds. So for our slightly larger competitors, they'll find themselves in the Bud Heavy class and probably won't be surprised to find out that the winner this evening is going away with a few Bud Heavies of their own. So a little bit different setup for the rest of the year, but we're gonna see who's the best of the best amongst a lot of some of the best drivers in DNQ in the national championship class and the ARCA class and the Bud Heavy class starting this evening. Yep. 
Well, for tonight, yep. which might have a glimpse of the future of DNQ, the Bud Heavy class, which is the same rules as Bush and Pro Cup and ARCA and the National Championship Series, but these guys got a little bit more to love in the draw. Yeah, one thing you got to really respect is uh, how braced up that turn four wall is because it's going to need it. Damn, you thick boy. These dudes are eating cheeseburgers, they're <laughs> slamming beers, they're good corn-fed thoroughbreds, and we're happy to have them here at the fair racing DNQ. Well, Bud Heavy is definitely going to be something that is uh, on the block for next year. Not not fully sure yet what they're gonna, how it's all going to play out. Well, let's go ahead and take a look at the SRI Poll Award for tonight's event. Brandon Connard will start on the poll. I do not have the times for this night for some reason. But during the dash race, Jamie Edwards will start from the lead, and uh, Connard will go to row two with Wilcox. Row number three, Travis Brown and Eric Yoke. Row five, Aaron Hodges and Joe Hannon. Andrew Fuller and DJ Powell in the next row. Sydney Collins and Matt <laughs> Weiser. <laughs> and sorry. <laughs> I so yeah. Off to Thompson. Off to Thompson's next. <laughs> yeah, so we had uh, six lap dash races for the top six. So that's why the, the pole winner is not the same as who's actually starting on the pole. Pete Shepard of the Mortal Love End Cart Camera, Avenger One Man Cart Stands. And Jamie Edwards, who hit the fence like eight times the other night, is on the pole for the second. Moonhead. <laughs> have an in-car camera, so this ought to be good. Not only has the weight gone up, but the talent has gone down. So we'll see. We'll yeah. see. <laughs> Do we have a funnel cake count going on these guys? Actually, it's fried Oreos, and yes, about ten. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can just hear the engine struggling as they head down the back stretch at a snail's pace. It's my goodness. Once they get going, though, they're going to get going, and that's why you need an ultimate racing helmet. Give them a call. Jimmy Edwards yeah. is <laughs> leading this race, and he was horrible last night. So that's, that's just – no offense, Jamie, but that's that's the truth. And here we are racing. These guys got to run two or three high-line laps just to get wound up <laughs> to be able to run the bottom. These suckers uh, – the gearing is high as we go on board the Avenger one-man cart stand with Travis. Oh, Racing against Eric Yost. Oh, yeah. Looks like uh, he's getting slapped around. Right there. Oh, it's getting hot and sweaty. Like, they got to hitch up the pants as they go three wide off of four. <laughs> someone makes a sharp cut to the inside. They get, they get they get it sorted out before someone ends up in the wall, but not too soon. Woo, it's heavy out there. <laughs> Man, I hope some barbecue restaurant is watching this action and just wanting to sponsor this next year because, uh, you know, the Hard Eight Heavy Series, smoke pit's about to uh, come on board. the Smoke Pit Heavy Series. I mean, Jimmy Dean Sausage. If you're out there and you're looking, man, this is the series you want to sponsor. And more excited for the drivers because you don't have to worry about having a skinny guy with you know less weight on his cart. He can put it where he wants it. These guys, the all man right here. Jamie Edwards leading this field right now in that beautiful Piedmont Airlines 03. Yeah, he's actually got it together tonight. I don't know what he changed. Uh, Maybe he just knocked the toe correct in, in one of those hits last night. Uh, but the middle of this field is looking like Oprah's midsection. An absolute disaster as uh, we got our arms up. Joe Henning. Somebody's in the wall. Joe Henning gets involved in something. Let's see if we can see the replay of it. Oh. You know, there is a Sheets mm. gas station down the street. Maybe you saw the sign for ordering some food there. It's yeah. Professor Klutzworks restart zone. Definitely getting a workout. Yeah, those clutches, uh, Professor's going to have to set them a little bit heavier for these fat asses. Definitely not going to spin the tires in this one. Oh, caution out again. Matt Weber having an issue there. Mark Weber. There we go. Back green. And, man, if you thought the racing action was going to be any less than what it is now as Connor goes to the inside of Jamie Edwards. And, oh, my goodness, this is good. Aaron Hodges involved in this as well, along with Eric Yost. Ooh, like Hawaiian beachfront property in Oprah. Connor wants it all. He's doing everything he can to try to get <laughs> Edwards out of the way, using him up. But, like we saw last night, that high line up of four, 
Gets a better drive, but they're now three wide heading into one. Rosie O'Donnell sneaks underneath Brandon Connor, but now here comes Whoopi Goldberg <laughs> making a move to the inside. <laughs> Oh, Brandon Connard. Old Cheesecake Connard. <laughs> Takes his guest. <laughs> cheesecake Connard. <laughs> Nobody's drinking Diet Coke in this field. Here we go. Connard. But Hodges to the inside, having a full leaded butt heavy. And here comes Jamie Edwards back. This racing is actually really good. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Connor goes to the high side trying to get that thing wound up and get some momentum like it's qualifying at Daytona. Is, is someone up in the trees? <laughs> nah. We're looking at the pines there for a minute as Wilcox has an issue. And Whoa! Why do these guys hit oh, the ball like God. that? I never did that when I raced here. I don't understand why that happens. Let's watch it again for Pete Shepard's on board. Did you ever do that, Bill, when you were racing here? Uh, I've watched a lot of races at Port Royal, and sometimes Macri will get up there and right rear the wall before... Uh, Getting into one, maybe these guys are trying to be cool. It ain't working. There's now. that patch of NDF. We've seen it a couple times. And my goodness, did we just see it right there. Lights are on at the fair. It's getting dark, which means it's time for almost that five to go restart. Here for the first feature of the night. We're closing in on it. One thing I'm noticing, Jay-Z, is uh, these guys' heads are really laid back and over. It looks like they're uh, trying to get... Trying to... Uh, Hang on, they're getting a little bit tired. Yeah, not a sissy strap in sight, though, as these boys are buckling down, getting in that double-decker cheeseburger from the trailer the next lot over, and they are duking it out here as <laughs> Connor tries to insert himself in the middle. Someone goes spinning oh! in the infield, Rusty Wallace, a Talladega style, but we stay green. Wow. That was a heck of a left-hand turn there. It looked like the view. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> Caution is out for Austin Thompson's left-hand turn. Man, this, I mean, the top three up here, Hodges, Connard, Yost, I mean, these guys are just slugging it out. It is great racing to watch as we are back green. It's very interesting to see how high the right front is on that Jamie Edwards car under caution because when that thing gets some load on it in the corner, it is nice and flat. That's a lot of weight transfer going on on that machine but it's making it work pete shepherd brings out the caution probably out of gas Bulldozer. <laughs> professor clutch works restart zone you know jamie edwards has a nice paint scheme on that car but the body is pretty rough on it that's a nice wrap though it's a cleveland brown it's like when the, the big guys buy those t-shirts that are cut to make you look skinny like you still got those rolls underneath but it presents itself really well <laughs> Aaron Hodges just jumps to the lead here with only a few laps left, getting ready to get to that Nitro 5 to go. Edwards oh. tries to hit him oh. in the left rear and just, man, that's tough to overcome. Look at all the speed that he scrubbed off. He's all the way back to fifth. Aaron Rodgers out there in front, stretching his legs. Now he's got that thing wound up. Better not throw a cost. Stretching his heels, but not his Achilles, Aaron Rodgers. Says, uh... <laughs> There it is. We've been waiting for it. The Nitro Manufacturing, five to go. Man, uh, this is probably going to get pretty interesting with these guys. They're all pretty tired. Their tires are worn out. Track's worn out. Lots of muscles ready to be thrown here with five to go. Is Can't tell who's on the outside, but Aaron Rodgers on the point. Gives it up. Eric Yost will take the lead, followed by Aaron Hodges, Brandon Conard, and DJ Powell making a run into the fourth. And here comes Jamie Edwards trying to make that move as well. And uh, Conard doing the best that he can. And wow, back there in the back of this field is impressive what's going on there. It looks like, it looks <laughs> like a, a Texas border crossing back there with people four, five, and six wide with unfettered access to the entire racetrack. This old cheesecake tries to get a, a, a nose in there. Can't quite make it stick. Unlike the cookie crust on the underside of that pie, he's trying his darndest, though. Cheesecake cutter. That's a good one. <laughs> White flag is out, and in the future, I see some Papa John's garlic sauce for Eric Yost, who's going to come take the win. 
Yostis with a mostis. Cheesecake Connor can't hold on for a second. He can hold on for seconds, just not second place. <laughs> That's enough bad jokes. This is kind of victory lane. Boo. <laughs> Eric Megan winner in the Bud Heavy class. And Eric, was this just a situation where if you got track position, you knew you had speed on the outside enough to get away the way you did in those final five laps? Yeah, we uh, we were working on the card all day, and uh, you know, finally came around there at the end, and the you know, track's getting better and faster, so um, we were changing you know for the for the track, and you know Bailey Chris Bailey's having a ton on this uh, you know the recon, you know it's running running awesome, so um, yeah, I'm happy, it's awesome. <laughs> How, how tough was it to maintain your composure? Because that was as physical a racing as we've seen the entire week here at the Iredell County Fairgrounds. But to be able to get to that point where you could make that restart, how tough was it just to keep the bigger picture in mind? Oh, yeah, it was awesome, man. It was, it was beating and banging. I mean, this little short track, you got to kind of drive that way. I mean, there's no, no other way around it. I mean, you got to kind of get in the route, you know, route around. But, um, you know, everybody was safe and, you know, everybody raced good. And it was, it was a good, good, clean race. And we ended up on top. So it was, you know, track position at the end. We were there. So. So what do we think of the comedic genius of Eddie Hunt that the winner in the Bud Heavy class gets a, uh, a bit of Bud Heavy, right? <laughs> Absolutely. At least it's not Bud Light. So. <laughs> Life could be worse for Eric Biggin, winner of the Bud Heavy class here during fifth stop performance night at the Iredell County Fairgrounds. Aaron Hodges, runner-up in the Bud Heavy class here tonight at the Iredell County Fairgrounds. And Aaron, you, you looked at Brandon, you said, right after you got out of the car, I love it when we can race like that and keep it straight at the end. Uh, how much fun was that banging and just beating on each other's doors for the entirety of uh, that final five lap restart? Yeah, it was an absolute blast. Uh, this is the first time, well, I remember it two years ago, but it was a totally different game. I love this place. I wish we were here. I wish we got back and forth from New Brunswick here. But I've never, uh, I've never had a near beat here. I've never finished better than fourth, so <laughs> this is actually, this is pretty cool, but yeah, that was good racing. I love, I love racing, rubbing on each other, still going straight. I mean, there's a lot of people here you can't do that with. You'll be up in the fence or anything like that. It's a good time. I wish, I wish we could have got one more, but I don't have a good What makes this place special and, and different compared to Mobridge for you, and, and why do you like it so much? It's just so small, and I just love – it's like a bull ring, you know what I mean? Just action-packed everywhere. Every corner, you lean on somebody getting getting hit, and it's just a total blast. Did you expect the racing to be as physical as it was coming into tonight? Yeah. Yeah, usually Predator racing is like that at DQ, really. Uh, occasional nights will have good ones, but it's usually like that all the time that I've seen. So you kind of expect it, and I'm glad we came out with P2. Runner-up tonight here at the Iron County Fairgrounds during Fit Stop Performance Night. P3 tonight for Brandon Conrad in the Bud Heavy feature during fit stop performance down at the Iredell County Fairgrounds. And you pretty quickly got on the ledge here on the fence. We're right in front of the uh, start-finish line here, and, and you just took a seat. So I, I, I take it that race sort of wore you out a little bit. Uh, yeah, the race did a little bit, but that go-kart's running all three classes, and it's just a couple guys. So we're trying to thrash between every single race. Uh, that's mainly why I'm beat, but I'll be sore after that demo derby. Everybody else enjoyed it. More power to them. I mean, and I'll lean on somebody. Me and the 58 right there, we were leaning each other. But then sometimes you just get fumbled. But it's whatever. You know, our go-kart uh, wasn't very good here tonight. It's not been good in any class. Uh, ready to get back to Millbridge. How much did you have to will it to a podium finish, given how much you've been struggling with the setup tonight? Yeah, I... I don't know. I couldn't even think about driving a line. I was just trying to protect, protect, protect. So, uh, I don't know. I guess I was just trying to run the bottom. I got the lead there for a little while, and I'd like to see a long run and maybe try to get in a little rhythm. And I guess I left a uh, half a cart too, too much wide getting into one there, and somebody filled the hole. So, I definitely know how to race. It was my first time out here. So, uh, I know how to race the 390 class for the championship, so we'll see if we can get up on the wheel there. I think we start like 11th, so we got some work to do. What makes this place such a challenge compared to Millbridge? I don't know that the track is. I think it's more the the aggressiveness of the driver. It is bull ring. I mean, like I said, I'll I'll rub doors with the best of them. Uh, it's just, I mean, got every corner. It seemed like you were rubbing rubbing doors. That was where it was a little aggravating, but I made the wrong decision on a. Uh, choose got myself behind the eight ball so uh, we'll see it's action-packed bull ring racing p3 tonight for brandon conrad at iredale county uh, well should have been a lot better than that but i guess when they can't pass you they just run into you and so is what it is right 
still fun. Select runs out here, coming out just to have a little bit of fun. We're expecting to run that well tonight. And uh, explain what it was like to be up front there. Uh, the racing was absolutely out of control. It was fun to watch. Yeah, it was insane. Well, I mean, the racing like that is the reason that I don't race out here. But it's also the reason that I come back and race out here, you know. So it, it was a lot of fun. Wish they could have uh, got the finish we deserve. But hey, that's racing, right? That's why they go and call it winning. So it's fun. It's a good, good run back. Yeah, thanks, bro. Now this is after the race. Jamie Edwards went down to have a couple choice words with Brandon Conard. I think he was missing some Freud, fried Oreos from his trailer. Yeah. <laughs> Did you fucking steal my mozzarella sticks? I had six in there, you fat ass. <laughs> he needs to have an extra large Mountain Dew and calm down here. These two, you know, this is just a product of the fair, Bill. I know we've seen this quite a few times with you yourself. But this is just what happens. They're out here racing hard. Yeah, I'll show you where to put that corn <laughs> I think that's what he said. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's just no getting around, beating and banging, and uh, there's some altercations that's going to happen anyway. He said, yeah, right there's the food stand. Let's go get a funnel cake. I think that's what they were saying. TNT Canopy's ARCA series, Will Monroe, back from paying his fine for an illegal exhaust, will be on the pole, along with Carson Dollarhide, an up and coming racer. Number two, the Amish running back. We saw him leave a lot of laps yesterday, and Row Rose three, Tony Infinger, and Ethan Lander coming back out. Dylan Teasley and Jay Zarapata. Matt Weber and Eric Yost, who's got a W under TNT so Row 6, Andrew Page and Ricky Fisher. Here's the ARCA series. Not in the national championship. If you made four starts in Busher Pro Cup, you were eligible to run for this championship. So another little championship you can find your way into if you didn't run worth a shit most of the year. So glad to have these guys on board to run the ARCA series as Stuart has an in-card camera for tonight. <laughs> <laughs> and Will Monroe were on board the 98 with another one-man Avenger cart stand. We like to call those Easter eggs in some of the videos. <laughs> Keep you guys on your toes. Kind of looks like them, too. <laughs> and pew beard and all. Green flag, we are underway. These guys are the less talented drivers or guys who made four starts uh, in Pro Cup or Bush. Racing for a championship, and uh, hey, they just want to come run. So here they are out here at the Iredell County Fair having a great night. These are the street stocks of D&Q, and we just saw that uh, double lot with Brandon Connard in it run second or third. So let's see. Let's keep an eye on that machine to see if he can do one better or two better get the W here. Today. That's Ethan Landers in that piece now, and uh, they share that cart. Landers did qualify for the national championship, decided to waive his spot. Andrew Hale picked that up. So they can share the cart and run for the ARCA Championship and the National Championship. Well, look As at we that. go on board, check out the Ultimate Racing Helmets backstretch camera. Still seeing those splitters flutter, Bill. What does that do to the aero balance as that splitter flutters going down the backstretch? Oh, it just makes it go crazy. You're, you know, 60% front, 20% front, 60% front, 20% front. You never know what's gonna, what it's going to be entering turn number three, which is... Scary as can be for a driver because that's the fastest you're going to go on this whole track. As we see everybody beating bang the splitters right off them in turn number you one. You see them get all stacked up and, and bottled up on the bottom there while the leader just runs away with it. you really got to be a half a lane up to find any speed as we're on board with the Amish running back here. Jonathan Stewart and our Avenger one-man cart stand on board. Uh, he's on the bottom. He's got the left front and that loose wet stuff slows the cart up a little bit. And he just does not get the run off that you would have had if you were about a half a lane up where the, the fellow was at Mark Weber or uh, Mike Weber, whatever his name is, on the outside, I believe. So why why do you think Stewart's so good in dash? And then he comes out here and struggles when we put the big tires on the right side. Well, probably because he doesn't know what he's doing. <laughs> and he finally hit on something in the little tires and can't replicate it in the big tires. It's that change in stagger, you know what I mean, across the back of the go-kart. That changes cross, that changes your front and rear percentages. It throws the whole go-kart off. So, especially if you guys just come here with one dude in the back of your pickup truck, you don't got time to wholesale the go-kart between rounds. So you gotta kinda just sell out for one and go out and have fun in the other. Right now, Will Monroe and 
Carson Dollarhide, who did pass a tire sample, by the way, uh, leading this field, doing a great job against the uh, some of the drivers here in the ARCA TNT Canopies ARCA series with the Ultimate Racing Helmets. Cameras were watching that wall get awfully close for some of these guys. We're doing a good job staying off it here in the arcs. Yeah, extra bracing definitely needed here at the fairgrounds. And uh, Carson Dollarhide, really a good run, comes from a great pedigree of racers. So not surprised at all to see him out front. The track looks rolled in really, really well. Jeremy uh, makes a, a miracle out of this fair track every single year. And... Um, it just seems like there just isn't a ton of bite in it, but also it could be the, the setup of the go-karts that are on board the 92 machine here with their Avenger one-man stand. It just seems like guys aren't getting a lot of grip dialed into that right rear. Tons and tons. Oh, man, we're beating bang here. Tons and tons of yaw. That that moment of yaw has the rear ends really hung out here. And that's why that high line so so popular. That's where all the speed is, if that made any sense whatsoever. You can just see how slick the track has gotten and how much these guys are sliding around. You know, you slip a right rear one time and it just scrubs so much speed, one or two guys get right underneath you. And we're at, at Millbridge, you have a little bit of banking to work with, right? You have something to, to stick that right rear tire into. The fair track is very, very flat, minimal banking. So it's really on you to jack that weight. And there's there's no cushion to lean on. It's, it's straight on that tire. No, and now we're starting to see some lap traffic here for Carson Dollarhide. And he's, he's working lap traffic pretty good. We do have a lucky dog here at DNQ, but uh, Andrew Page down. And, and if you don't have, we had a test here on Saturday for all the carts I wanted to test. And, man, if you came, you probably learned quite a bit. We know Showalter did test, and it helped him out a lot as we're under the Nitro Manufacturing 5 to go caution. But you have an opportunity to do that. You probably should do it if you Uh, these guys don't take it seriously, though, and uh, the guys that do it definitely shows. I mean, these are the guys that we're watching right now that aren't really the serious ones. You know, they're just kind of out here trying to have some fun and race with their buddies. And oh, no! Oh, oh, God! Come home with a broken neck! <laughs> Will Monroe up and over in that 98 machine. My goodness. Let's take a look at this again in the instant replay. Oh. Yeah, go! Right here. Oh! Wow. Got a case of the spins there. Looked like me on a Saturday night. Man, it, um, the card on the inside there looked like he uh, treated like Will Monroe like a Democrat ballot just getting stuffed in a box. Just <laughs> flipped right <laughs> over on oh, his head. <laughs> and that's the shot right there. All the other teams are going to be eye-fucking for the next three weeks. So that underneath of that go-kart. Somebody get David mm. Green down there right now. <laughs> Red flag is out. We're going to be changing Hans devices next week. Headrest padding, I've, you name I it. I really hope that window net is that window net better have been. The, the window net and roof hats were down while he was flipping. So <laughs> DNQ safety initiatives once again prevail as we're back green. And my goodness, the back of this field is a complete disaster. Unsurprisingly, Jonathan Stewart, who was so good last night, puts uh, Ethan Landers three wide. He's going to try to get himself on the podium. Amish running back, putting two hands on that ball, jamming her in there, hoping for some shoving from behind. He's going to make that uh, podium. It's, it's impossible to keep that go-kart down on the bottom, coming off of four. Um, and it screws you and the guy on the outside of you up as the leaders are driving out of their lives and be able to drive their own line and get a good clean run off of fours. The white flag is out, one more to go. Carson Dollarhide has won a race before he's celebrating already and uh, he's gonna go home with a victory here at Throwback Night, Fit Stop Performance Race in the TNT Canopies Arca Series. Let's go down and talk to you. Carson Dollarhide with arguably the most dominant performance of the two nights here during Fit Stop Performance Night at the Iredell County Fairgrounds. Winner in the Arca class. And Carson, where did you figure out this line through the center of the corner? Because you had that nailed down early on and you were consistently hitting it every single lap. Uh, you put it wherever she wants to go. I mean, this place isn't very hard to figure out. It's tight. Just got to get through there. Hope it gets up off the corner. Hope you don't get wrecked. 
had one flip over my right shoulder, scared the shit out of me, but you'll have that. So I just want to thank everybody here helping me, uh, Zach, Cameron, my dad, Dylan, PJ, my mom at home, all my family, and everybody at Young's. So that's all I got to say. Even with it being that crazy at the end. And Paul Paul back here. As, as crazy as that was behind you, have you ever had a race that's just sort of gone as easily as that? Um, the last one at Millbridge, that one was about the same as this one. Just check out. Nobody, don't hear nobody, feel nobody. And then to win here at the fairgrounds, it's a bit of a different setup compared to Millbridge. So how, how big is that for you? What's that mean to you? Uh, it's just a battle of who can adapt better, you know, come out here. And a lot of people, some people ain't been here before, some people have, but you just got to figure it out. Go on with what you got. Carson Dallahide riding a wave of momentum into victory lane tonight here at the Iredell County Fairgrounds winner in the ARCA class. Rowan Mason P2 here in the ARCA class during fit stop performance night at the Iredell County Fairgrounds. Rowan, it looked tricky and it, that was a wild battle for third on back. So what allowed you to separate yourself in that final restart to really take control of second? It's just staying committed to the top. The top line was there. Had the, if you can keep the momentum up, it was there. And I ran my worst laps of the race trying to chase down Carson around the bottom driving it too damn hard. I should have just kept it up top, maybe would have fought for it, but I don't know. He was really fast the other day. So I'm really happy, though. Pick got me set up with a really good cart. Got to thank him a lot. So. How crazy was that in that mid-pack? And, and to what degree were you racing for position amongst the first 20 laps? And to what degree were you just trying to make sure that you'd be around? I, I was just trying... I knew we were starting fourth. I knew we'd have the run on the outside. And you know, Carson and I used to work together, so he was like, "Oh, just give me, give me the push, give me the push." I'm like, "Man, I'm all there for it. I'm all there for it." <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it was just got kind of mired back through a little bit of rough racing, which I mean, you know, short track rubbing racing, you know, and mired back in like third, fourth, got shuffled back. I think maybe a six, but you know, we were able to make it back up to second, missed the big one there on the back stretch, and brought her home to second. So I can't complain. It's a different racetrack, but can you carry this momentum into Bill Bridge next week? I don't see why not. Rowan Mason, P2 tonight here in the ARCA class during fit stop performance line at the Iredell County Fairgrounds. A familiar face back on the podium here in DNQ karting and at the Iredell County Fairgrounds too during fit stop performance line. Jonathan Stewart, P3 in the ARCA class. Jonathan, did you learn anything last night running here that helped you a little bit tonight? Absolutely not. These things are totally different, <laughs> and that's what was so fun. I was just way off on this thing, so I, you know, threw the kitchen sink at it, and it was different, and I had to learn how to drive all over again. And uh, I was like, I'm happy finishing sixth, and then we're here somehow, so it was pretty cool. What makes these cards different, especially with regards to how they handle and how you drive them versus what you were behind the wheel of last? Yeah, I mean, I'm trying to figure that out, but, like, the tires are so hard, you know, stagger, all the stuff everyone talks about, and it's just what does that take, you know? It's pretty cool to try and figure it out. How crazy was it battling through the pack? That was a, a, a tough battle to get to P3. Was was that some of the hardest racing you've done all week? Yeah, it's it's like a speedway on you know, a short track at once this kind of thing, you know, got to be in the right place. So, yeah, it's just a lot of fun. Glad we didn't have any more flips than we did. <laughs> Got a little bit wild, but he'll take it. P3 tonight for Jonathan Stewart in the ARCA class during fifth South Performance Line at the Iredell County Fairgrounds. I want to thank James Pike for his dedication, along with Chris Williams, who came for two nights of racing action. And uh, I want to thank all these drivers, and we're getting ready to start the national championship, which is the best of the best from Bush and Pro Cup. I mean, best of the best is one way to put it. Best of D&Q, I guess. <laughs> Um, these are the uh, most talented guys we got out here that are going to beat and bang and try to take home that championship, one of the most coveted trophies in all of motorsports. The competition is tight. The corn dogs are hot. The fans are locked and loaded. This is going to be one hell of a show here at the Iridale County Fair. DNQ is going to have people standing up in their, in their seats. Well, we had a Bush season and a Pro Cup season. Two brothers won those championships. Let's go down and talk. Kind of John Kidwell about to start the national championship feature. Won the Pro Cup championship. You and Anthony, both your brothers. Uh, now you get to battle it out here, starting from about mid to back of the pack here. What do you got to do to get up to the front here in 25 laps? Man, we threw a bunch of changes at it. Um, we struggled a little bit in there in qualifying, just trying to find the speed and the, and the corner entry. and Exit off, we were pushing a little bit. So we threw the kitchen sink at it. We'll see how... Uh, 
See if we get the old KPG Katana up to the front, start ninth, and uh, it's twenty long 25 laps. Just got to gotta keep it clean. Did you tell your brother what you did or no? No, hell no. <laughs> <laughs> That's John Kidwell. We're going to go talk to Anthony when we get him over here. We're going to see what he has to say. Yeah, you're good. Nowhere.us champion Anthony Kidwell. Anthony, what do you got to do to win this race? Your brother said he'd do the kitchen sink at it, starting from the back. Uh, i got to do everything opposite of what I've been doing from the qualifying, which is go forward and not backwards. Stop dragging the ass. <laughs> Yeah, he said he didn't tell you what you did, what he did, so did you tell him what you were going to do? Hell no. We'll see who wins out of these two brothers here tonight. <laughs> no. <laughs> always got to love the fair and the games and the rides. It's always a good time, but right now all those fans are heading down to the racetrack, hopefully, to watch this national championship race. Yeah, all those balloons are filled with air dusters, so uh, <laughs> those... <laughs> Those carnival attendants can uh, get their high. While they're Feels like I'm walking on sunshine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. SRI Pole Award goes to Gage Painter. He'll start on the pole. Well, he got the pole in qualifying. Carson Dollarhide will get the pole after the dash race for the Shipworks National Championship. For number two, Andrew Hale and Ray Thies. Damian Jenks and Thomas Markham in row three. Tristan Bruce and Ben Murphy, the Beef Tips Machine. Dano sponsorship. Cheesecake Connard <laughs> and Johnny Kidwell. Old Cross Thread and Tyler Gearing up for some more Cheesecake. Questions. Speaking of cheesecake, Anthony Kidwell <laughs> and Alex Kirk in the next row. <laughs> Alex Lacanata and Patrick Brody, last year's champion, starting on the back row. Yeah, and here's the information. 390, this is the top 10 from Bush and Pro Cup. And, uh, man, it's just uh, something different to do, you know. Pretty excited to watch these two go at it. You know, through all through the year, you wonder, you know, which series is stronger, which series is better. We're getting ready to find out. Last year, as Alex LaCanada in the Nowhere.us Bush series was able to take home the championship. That seemed to be the most competitive series, but you never know. Now it's a toss-up. Yeah, guys get creative and yeah. play games thinking that, oh, maybe if I do the, the Bush series or something like that or the Nowhere series, I'll have an advantage. But the talent's sprinkled out evenly between them, so we'll see what happens if we go on board uh, with old Rib Shack here. <laughs> Alex Kirk, number 18, in the Avenger one-man stand -in. He'd be a hell of a guy to get a Smoke Pit Pop sponsorship. Oh, hell yeah. Dollar Hyde is having a good night. He's going to start from the pole of this national championship race in a sub, in a sub roll for Jeremy Murphy as a green flag is out. Gage Painter on the outside. We'll see if all that talent still transfers over from the last race. Oh, Carson Dollar Hyde takes a huge right getting into three and puts everybody four wide going into turn number one. There's no way this is going to work. Yeah, Ray Feast normally running in the back, showing some speed here tonight, getting very aggressive, trying to take advantage of the, the rare speed he is showing this evening as he settles into the third spot behind Dollarhide. Andrew Hale there in fourth as well, kind of the same story with him, but got to love this national championship. You just have a couple different tracks to deal with as Ben Murphy about gets wrecked there coming off of turn four. But Gage Painter has come out to the lead, and he is leading Carson Dollarhide, driving for Jeremy Murphy. And then Ray Thies, as you talked about before, very impressive so far. Yeah, Gage Painter, we know that thing's been in the wind tunnel. They've really studied a lot of splitter flutter on that. And so this track suits that style of uh, cart setup perfect. As we go on board with Rib Shack and the Avenger one-man cart stand, Looking at the battle in front of him, that's for fourth, fifth, sixth, it looks like. Can't quite keep that thing on the bottom. You see a bunch of wheel in it as it shoves the nose up as he goes by uh, Cheesecake Connard. Very brave trying to stick it in the outside of the last second there going into the turn. I thought I was maybe going to eat a face full of wall, but uh, old Cheesecake cut him a break and uh, gave him a little bit of room. He's going to be so bad. <laughs> 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 the best part is it's all organic too it's like just out of nowhere right it's like no one's plotting yeah. against them you know, it's just fun. Yeah. everyone's having fun man <laughs> oh starting to get a little bit strung out as uh the racetrack starts to win 
one thing you got to do here at the Iredell County Fairgrounds, you got to race the racetrack before you can race your competitors. As uh, we got a battle here for the third place race. Oh, oh God! In Hale. Andrew Hale takes a ride up the fence for some reason. Try he really tried to get uh, some momentum there, didn't he? Let's take a look at that again in the instant replay. Just whoop. run him. Yep. Run him by himself, watching the guys in front of him, kind of not paying attention to where that right front is, and uh, almost paid for it. And the worst part about that is it you jerks know, the wheel right out of your hand. If it's, you know, one thing these guys do if it's a little bit too loose on entry is try to get that right rear right up against the wall, get that air dumped over on the spoiler, tighten you up, and it looks like he got a little bit too greedy on that lap, but uh, luckily he didn't go over. Alex LaCanada started dead last in this feature, and he is up to the sixth position, battling for a top five, last year's champion, doing a great job. <clears throat> as uh, as he's trying to make his way up into that uh, championship once again. That was down in his trailer earlier, and uh, they were throwing spindles, throwing axles, had the body off of it. They were rebounding stuff. So whatever they tried coming here uh, with did not work. I don't know if Sim gave him something wrong or what have you. Oh, he got off. Classic Iredell County left hook in the middle of the back stretch there. Austin's out. Patrick Brody go goes around. for a spin off of turn two. Getting ready in the clutch works restart zone. As we're back green. Looks like Gage Painter is going to jump to the lead. Where did John Kidwell come from? And Alex LaCanada in your top three. They are flying. I know that. Uh, I heard some of the camps out here were, were testing as we got one almost in the wall here. We're testing thin 120 wall axle extended hub on the right rear to try to generate some more mechanical grip as two are hung up. Ray Thies, one of your front runners tonight. Ray Thies steps on it as we get a re replay of what happened. Yeah, him and Anthony Kidwell got into it off the corner. And that sucks for Ray Thies. A lot of gang signs being thrown right there. And, uh, you know, got them hands up. I uh, gotta love, uh, gotta love Ashley Bennett out there working tonight, helping out some track work. And man, we're we're seeing an action-packed Shipworks National Championship race with Gage Painter and Carson, or uh, Carson Coleman. Yeah, no, Carson Dollarhide Carson. was pretty good in ARCA, but now you get some really good competition, and uh, now he's third. So as we go back. Pinch down on the inside, trying to follow Kidwell through. So far, he's nice and clean, but they're getting the outside line. La Canada <laughs> coming from dead last. Now he's running third. Boys and girls, do not sleep on that man. He has got some legit talent here. Keep an eye on him as the laps wind down here. Yeah, he must have came with some new sim stuff and just decided, well, it was too tight. Better put around in the right rear, and it worked for him. As Carson Dollarhide tries to get underneath Lacanada, makes it stick this time. They're too wide for third. Lacanada keeps it rolling on the outside. That momentum brings him back even at the line. Yeah, I'm not sure if he got some new sim or a new girlfriend, which I do know that's the case. So <laughs> see how that works for him. As our Nitro 5 to go caution is out, we're going to rack him back up and see what happens here with five laps to go. Locking out and not thinking about the girl right now as he's on the loud pedal. Normally, a new lady friend will slow you right down as Cheesecake goes to the inside of Lacanada and he makes it stick to take away that third spot. A lot of middle fingers out there. Mid-race, too. Take the hand off the wheel to give a finger. It's great. Everyone's fighting for that, that middle groove, right? The, the top's not fast. The bottom's not fast. All you got to do is just get underneath someone, slide up, and use eight wheels instead of two or four, and uh, hopefully you make it out clean the other side of the, the top four, nose to tail, a lot cannot a shuffle back to fifth. Still an impressive showing us. We're three, four wide, knocking down the wall, coming off a of four. <coughs> Still the best bird in all of D&Q was uh, Jeff Cordero at Mooresville Motorplex. He got 
snuff the bird before he was even through the corner halfway around. It was amazing. So we have a turn four. Gage Painter is going to take the win in the ship Worst National Championship. Gage Painter with a flag to flag victory to start off the National Championship class campaign in 2023 here at Fitstop Performance Line at the Iredell County Fairgrounds. Gage. Seemed like this thing was just really well set up from the beginning. So did you find something in practice that sort of flipped the switch for you going into the feature? Yeah, it, uh, it was really good in practice, but uh, we had a little bit left to find. My crew chief, Phil Curry, he's won this race before. Um, I can't say enough for him. I mean, if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be here. Between late models, go-karts, quarter midgets, you know, he's always had my back. And uh, he's just so smart when it comes to this. I just got to thank him enough. Uh, we definitely found something there. Uh, missed it in the dash race a little bit, but uh, he got her tuned up right there. And, uh, man, it was on rails. I can't say enough for him. My mom's coming out. Uh, all my friends. Sam, he's one of my best friends. Uh, Chad Bryant Racing, Blue Water Yacht Sales, um, Phantom Racing Chassis, they're uh, also supportive. He came over to you just before we got the chance to chat with you, and he said, if you ran the top and you kept the momentum up, there'd be something there. So did it take some convincing to get you to try and ride the cushion? No, I mean, if he says it goes, it's like the gospel. So <laughs> that's all. Made it easy. And then you've got not only a really, really cool throwback trophy here, but to win at the Iredell County Fairgrounds, it's a special night for DNQ, one of those nights of the year that you circle on the calendar. So to be victorious here tonight, what's that mean to you? You know, it means a lot. I've only ran here three times, uh, twice in the Mini Outlaws, and I've won twice. So, bull rings have always been my thing, and uh, it's just good, tight, hard racing. I like it. Gage Painter, I think, likes Iredell County. He comes away victorious tonight, winner in the national championship class here during Fit Stop Performance Night at the Iredell County Fairgrounds. Right. Johnny Kidwell, ninth to second in the feature here in the national championship class during Fit Stop Performance Night at the Iredell County Fairgrounds. Johnny. What was the game plan starting so deep in this, and, and what was your idea to try and get some track position before the comp call? Well, it was uh, throw the kitchen sink at it is what me and uh, Kinder talked about, and uh, he threw the kitchen sink at it, and it worked. We moved three hubs on this thing. We moved weight around. We did a camber change, and it woke this baby up. Um, KPG Katana was was definitely a whole lot better than it's been here, uh, here today, and, and uh, I felt great to kind of pick and choose where I needed to be at in the right spot, and it's, uh, with these races, it's it's all about being in the right position because everybody's, you know, leaning on one another, and, it, and these Predator engines, they don't take much to, to lose your momentum, and you just got to be at the right spot, and, you know, we, we were in the right spot, but most importantly, we hit it right on the setup, and, and uh, I can't thank uh, Kinder, John Kinder enough, and uh, Jim and John Kinder at KPG, Katana, just going to keep the momentum rolling, hopefully qualify better in the next one where we could be up there. But we had our shot with uh, with Gage, and he ran a great race. Congratulate to him and his, his crew, and we'll, uh, we'll regroup and be ready for uh, September 11th. How tough was it to maintain your composure, making your way up towards the front in a pack that was pretty contentious there for the opening 20 laps? Yeah, and I, I've been been doing this for a while, and, and uh, especially in the champ buggy uh, race, and it's, uh, patience is key. And I've been in uh, a ton of races where patience will actually pay off and you win. So it's just getting around the guys that you know you need to get around and, and race the guys clean, um, who you can race cl uh, with, uh, clean with. And, and uh, I was just, just fortunate enough tonight to, to be in the right spot and, and be up there up front and, and keep away from all the hoo-hahs uh, in the back. And, and to get such a strong finish here during NC Race Week at the Iredell County Fairgrounds, it's the only time of the year we run this track. So what's that mean to you? It means a lot. You know, I, I'm still... I wouldn't say wanting to win. I've already won here in the buggy two years ago, but it's two years, you know, and it's it's, it's special. Um, you know, one time we're here, you know, it's the only time we're here all year. And, uh, you know, to, to get a win here is, is, is definitely big, you know. And I said we'll come back next year and and uh, hopefully get that checkered flag. One spot better in 2024 is the goal, but tonight P2 for Johnny Kidwell here in the National Championship class during fifth stop performance night at the Iredell County Fairgrounds. We decided for this interview with Brandon Kadar that we would stand up and uh, I, I guess change the aesthetic a little bit here, but uh, you're back on the podium, P3 tonight, and with a, a little bit deeper charge than you had in the ARCA feature in the National Championship class, you come from 10th to 3rd. Walk us through just the process of picking your spots at the right time to get up there. Uh, I guess you can say I started 10th, but coming out of turn two, I was running dead last, so I think we made a pretty good charge back up to 3rd. Uh, definitely, that was the best to go kart. We kind of made some changes. 
best of go-karts handled all night. I changed up some driving stuff. It was definitely really good. I think we were a third place go-kart, maybe a second. Um, but also, I got fortunate coming up through there. I mean, one restart, I think like four or five people chose the bottom in a row, and I passed five, six go-karts just uh, choosing on the outside then hoping I was on all four wheels whenever I come out of two. Uh, but definitely definitely had a good go-kart, just ready to get out of here, and uh, that's what we needed. We needed a podium to give us a shot at Millbridge. Uh, I think we've had one of the fastest go-karts there. Uh, like the last three or four weeks um, and we just needed to give ourselves a shot to, to try to make some noise over there. Is this a case where with as much as you all had to work just to get this thing changed over between classes, is it a case where that sort of extra work maybe helped you because it, it kept you maintaining a really high level of work throughout the night to get this thing to eventually really be in a good spot for the end of it? Yeah, I mean, we kept tweaking on it and tweaking on it, uh, but it was just kind of driving the same until until that last feature. But like I said, I also changed up my driving style, so I don't know how much of it was that. If we could have unloaded right there, then I think we could have had a way better performance. Uh, just not our specialty out here. I think we're uh, just so good at Millbridge that uh, it's kind of hard to move a lot of stuff. Um, obviously, this is night and day different. Uh, but, hey, we come out of here with a podium. I think Ethan finished uh, fourth or fifth. Uh, so we're just trying to get ourselves in a position to win some championships. When you consider this, and clearly you're looking at this as, as maybe the weakest track amongst the final stretch runs. So to be able to come away with a good run here – knowing that you've got Millbridge in your back pocket where you've got tons of confidence in the program. Uh, how big is that for you to, to walk away with a, a really good points night tonight? Oh, it's huge. Uh, I mean, because if you bury yourself here, you about got to sweep the other two and hope. I mean, your good guys are going to run top three, top four. So you're not going to gain headway on them unless you win. So uh, coming out of here and with, with the podium was huge for us to, like I said, once again, put ourselves in position. Brandon Kennard, P3 tonight right in the hunt for the National Championship class crown at the end of the season. And final man on the podium tonight here at Fitzsap Performance Line at the Ardell County Fairgrounds. All right, Alex, top five from dead last. Talk about starting last, finish top five. Yeah, I mean, I knew this thing was good. Uh, it's got a little mix up in uh, qualifying with, um, you know, some efforts there. But uh, I knew the car was really good. Um, passed just about everybody in the field at least once tonight except for the top two and I think I had some for them so I'm uh, really going to thank uh, Zane Smith Company, Sheldon Creed, uh, my friend Zach, Peter and Drew um, these uh, number two carts back fast again so uh, we'll see how it fares for us in the rest of the, the uh, national championship. What's it like running here at the fair? Uh, this place is a blast. I wish we could race more places that actually require a little driving talent because it separates the, the boys from the men and obviously you can see that it's not all about motor and equipment so you know 18th to 5th tonight up to 2nd at one point you know it's just uh, just another day in the office. Let's take a look at the Shipworks National Championship final results Gage Painter gets the win Damian Jenks with a good run in 6th Trip Bruce in 8th didn't run quite as good as uh, Jerry Painter did. So Tripp's got to go back, put that thing back on the pull down and uh, see what was wrong with it. Maybe he'll post it after this race. Yeah, Kidwell doing Kidwell things, running up front, but uh, Kirk, he's, he's been very, he was very strong earlier this season. In the last couple weeks, um, I, I don't know if it's luck, you know, the fair race is an outlier, so I'm not going to hold it against him. He didn't have the pace tonight. Uh, but he's had some raw speed out there, especially in the, the season. You know, maybe as the, the war goes on, he'll be able to win a couple battles there. But heavy results, Eric Yost, Aaron Hodges, Brandon Connor. This is a slugfest. DJ Powell will be the highlighted driver from this race, but a lot to look forward to with this, uh, this series. I think 356 is the fried Twinkie count for DJ. <laughs> Anytime you have the mailbox letters on the side of your go-kart, you know, whatever they're cooking in their pits is going to be good. <laughs> yeah, either weight, twinkie count, hard talent. <laughs> <laughs> number hits close to home. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. Yeah. TNT <laughs> Canopy's ARCA Series. Dollar Hyde gets the win. Rowan Mason and Jonathan Stewart top three. Tony Infinger will be the highlighted driver with a nice top five finish. 
Yeah, good for him. Uh, I'm a shrine back. Definitely didn't have the speed tonight as he did last night. Track was a little bit different. Things change. Uh, maybe he stayed out a little bit too late last night and forgot what he was doing. Those fair ladies will trick you to st trick you into staying out late when you should be getting your sleep. I, I understand. But uh, old Ratchet Jaws and the, the young motorsports ride, right? I don't know if they're just selling out and saving the budget for 2024, but he's just been hanging on to the top 10 here. Hasn't really had that strong of a showing lately. Hoping uh, the old boss man can get him riled up here and motivate the team and have a strong showing next time out. Yeah, it's not like we're giving out draft picks for next year, so uh, you better get his shit together, right? Well, we want to thank you guys for joining us for two nights of exciting racing here at the Iredell County Fair. It was, exact, it was everything we thought it was going to be, wasn't it? Absolutely. I kind of expected uh, a USAT car to go over, which luckily didn't. But we had a lot of close calls, a lot of excitement, uh, a lot of funnel cakes, and a lot of middle fingers flying. Uh, what more could you want here at the Iredell County Fairgrounds besides maybe a Waffle Belly? <laughs> The, the fair race is always so much fun. The track's tight, um, they use each other up, that wall jumps out and bites a few people. All the fans got their money's worth, and I already cannot wait for the fair race next year. Well, I want to thank you guys for joining us on YouTube. Thank you, Bill and Jay-Z, and we'll see you guys for the 9-11 race, which is already taking place, but we'll edit it and get it to you as soon as possible. We'll see you later. Yeah.